So, I know you thought that it was gone, but we are back for good. This is Bike Life Science, and today's trick breakdown, we're gonna be looking at jump crisscross. We're talking right foot onto the left peg and left foot onto the right peg. If you know how any of these videos go, I'm going to play the video, and then I'm gonna let you guys see how it's done. I might play it in slow motion, I might not, I don't know. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in frame by frame, and we're just gonna break it down and give you guys a better understanding and a better generalization of how to actually do the trick. You know, more, more of a mental type of thing, because it's one thing to talk about, it's another thing to actually go out and practice the trick. Today we did things a little bit different. I also had the riders explain their thought process and things like that while they were doing the trick and when they go to actually do the trick. Uh, you guys already know we're going to talk about the pros and the cons, you know, does it look good? Does it not look good? Can you break a bone? Can you, you know, anyways, we're back. It's your boy, Bike Life Science, aka Bloomfield Productions. And let's get it pop. <laughs> Cheesy, let's get it pop. What? <laughs> I know I changed clothes, don't worry about that. But what I forgot to mention was, I forgot what I was about to say. What was I about to say? What was I about to say, bro? I remember, I don't know if I mentioned this, skies were clear, perfectly sunny. Uh, there was almost no wind at all, which is really good. I'm gonna have the riders explain uh, things like their clothing, their shoes, their parts on their bike, the bike that they're on, things like that, and let you get an insight from the rider specifically, which will help with uh, different different aspects. You know, if you're gonna be doing something, if, if you're on a specific bike, because, you know, doing this trick on of something like a Fat Ripper is completely different from doing this trick on something like a Monster Quad or a Mafia bike or a collective bike, things like that. I, I give this trick a, a 10. Only reason I say a 10 of 10 on difficulty is if you're not used to doing any kind of jump tricks, if you've never done a uh, jump from pedals to knee knock, jumping from the pedals to the peg, jumping from the pedal straight to the seat, if you've never done any of those tricks, this trick is probably gonna be pretty hard for you to do because not only are you jumping, but you need to make sure that you're crossing your feet and usually only one of your feet needs to be in perfect placement to get the trick to, to keep the bike up. But if you wanna make it look perfect, then both of your feet need to simultaneously touch both pegs. Not simultaneously, but they at least need to both touch both pegs. As you can see in this clip right here, um, Swaggy Leak actually misses his jump. Now we're gonna go frame by frame here and we're actually gonna take a look at why and how this got messed up at this moment. And if you look closely, you can clearly see that the the wheel the back wheel jumps up almost at the same time that he goes for the crisscross now here's the deal when you're doing this trick you really do not want to be stiff have you ever did peg work and wheelied on the pegs and put both feet on and then jumped with the bike while still keeping your feet on the pegs if you're too stiff like that then this will happen when you jump up for that trick or if your wheel, you know, if your wheel is a little flat or something like that, there's so many different factors that that wheel, the back wheel will come up at the same time as you. It's really ideal that your back wheel stays on the ground for a trick like this because you need as much clearance as possible. Almost everything. I saw that, right? One of the pros is gonna be that this trick looks really crazy. It doesn't matter if you're a starter and you're making an edit, you know, I can do some pretty basic tricks and I can't do jump the crisscross. So when I see it, I get hyped. Like, I think it is the coolest thing in the world. That's me personally. It's one thing to do it on a strip, like how we're doing in these videos, but it's another thing to actually go out to a ride out and show out and actually do these tricks. You guys already know what I'm about to say. This is gonna be a con for every single trick, even if there's no cons to a specific trick, there's always the con of breaking a bone. 
I will repeat this in every video so that you guys know for a fact that this will always and forever be a con. If you miss this trick, God help you. Look at the trick frame by frame, study it, look at how it's done. And if you're willing to go for it yourself, definitely go for it yourself. People have learned it, so people people younger than me have learned it, and I'm 19, so I'm pretty sure any of you can definitely learn it. Um, it's all about practice. Ask people, definitely ask people. All the bike life science is for is to give you a breakdown and make sure that you guys sort of understand a little bit better uh, how to mentally prepare for these type of tricks and more complex tricks and things like that. Even the basic tricks, there's still some sort of mental preparation for them. Because even with the most basic tricks, you can fall, you can break something, and it can be bad. I'm going to allow the riders to actually go ahead and step in and talk. They're going to tell you about things like their clothing, their bike parts, and you know what kind of mentality you should have going into these tricks. All right, so I feel like these pins, they like, they loose. They like, they not too loose. They loose, but they not too loose. And the shoes, they not really good with these pads. These shoes ain't got no grip. But I wouldn't recommend these pegs without grip tape at all. They too slippery. When you hit in the rain, you're going to slide, so don't even try it. <laughs> shoes, I wouldn't recommend these. The shoes I would recommend is the Jordan 13s. They're the best shoes to ride in. That trick, like when you first start doing this hard, like when I first started doing it, I had went to do it. I had on pants. I was too tight. It was like, it was tight and I had jump. And I went to jump and land on crisscross. My, my leg had landed on a tire, had a burn on my leg. That just was bleeding. It was like a scab. Make you feel like you the GOAT. <laughs> like you unstoppable <laughs> when you first do it. And like I was I was so happy when I first learned how to do that. Cause everybody this is one that I ran when it first came out. Everybody was trying to do it. First time I ever did it, I was in a battle. I was battling somebody, I forgot who I was battling. And I had did it and I had landed with two pedals and I had put the wheel down. I was hyped. And then after that he didn't even want to battle me no more. Oh snap. And that was the first time you landed? Yeah, my first time ever landing it. It's a good job. I got some stretchy sweatpants on. I would really recommend wearing sweatpants because like when you do any type of trick, like it stretches with your movement. I would really recommend people to put on grip tape on their pegs because like in the rain and stuff, like it gets slippery. And then grip tape on top of that, even if your pegs not slippery, you got a lot of grip. So it'll really help you land your tricks. It'll really help you place your movement on the peg. And then for my shoes, I just got some normal Air Maxes without the bubble. Like at the bottom, like as you can see, this, like when you land on the peg or the pedal, like it stabs into it, so it's more grip. Shoes are very flexible, so I would really recommend those shoes. The scary moment I had was one day when I was in traffic, I was going really fast, and I jumped to, um, from the pegs to crisscross, and like my pants had got, it had so much grip, it caught onto the tires, so like I flew forward, but I caught myself in time. Now I would have flipped off the bike. And, like, any trick, when you first land it, like it's a good feeling, because like, damn, I never thought I would land this trick. Like, it still tricks in my mind that I'm like, I'll probably never try and never do, but watch one day I'm gonna try and just land it and I'm gonna get like that really happy feeling like, damn, I never knew I was actually gonna ever do this trick and land it without hurting myself. That's like, that's how I think about it. I get just really happy. And I, like, it's an accomplishment, so I'm proud of myself. I'm gonna be honest, any trick in general, the mindset you're supposed to have is like, you really don't care what happens. Like, you're supposed to have like that confidence mindset, because if not, that's where like things really go wrong. Because there's times where I had that mindset, did the trick first shot, they even know I could do it. And then there's times where I'll be scared to try the trick and then I'll actually do the trick and hurt myself or miss the pegs or the pedals. So it's like, you gotta have that, I'm really confident in myself mindset. Cause if you're really confident then 100% of the time, you're at least going to do the trick, but not land it. And then second try, you're most likely going to land the trick. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching that. Um, just so you know, if you guys want to see any other tricks broken down, let me know. Drop a comment, uh, shoot me a DM on Instagram, it doesn't matter. I'm going to try to drop these every Thursday or Friday, so that's that's the goal for that. I'm going to try to drop Day in the Life videos every Monday, and ride out videos are probably just going to drop whenever they drop. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to Bloomfield Productions. See that? That logo right there? Subscribe. <laughs> All right, I'm out. <laughs>